I have made it to the Grand Canyon National Park. I am going to uh, Mather Point right now, and I'm going to see what there's, uh, there is to say. I have looked at all the trails, and I've decided that the Hermit Trail is the one that I would like to do. It's got lots of vistas and things. Probably not the whole 12.6 miles, but enough of it. So let's go see what we can see. You know how you expect something to be, you know, absolutely fantastic, but you just didn't know how fantastic it was going to be? Yeah, I had no idea how fantastic this was going to be. Wow. It goes down so far. Good grief. Mather Point. Those people over there with no guardrail, no nothing, came up from that right there, climbed out like hell no. Just big old no. No. Hit the hop. Oh no. Absolutely not. Nope. Those people over there, right? Little teeny specks. People. Pull it out. That's what they're standing on. Yeah, that's what they're standing on. There's no Amazing. guardrail there. Everything you see here is pre-dinosaur. The top layers are 270 million years old, so we've lost two, well, you know, whatever came before 270 million years ago. All the history in the rock is gone already. It's rooted away. So what we have, they left here, is the very bottom where the, the basement rock and then the red rock in between was where an ocean was. And then um, the Paleozoic area is above that. Well, yeah, there was an ocean during the Paleozoic period too. And then above that, there's like a red layer. It's when the desert start. Well, no, the white layer is where the desert started. So it's been, it was a, it was an ocean, then it was a, a tropical forest, and then it was a desert. It's pretty cool. A lot of history. Down there is the Colorado River. It's like a teensy weensy little patch of it you can see. Right there. It's the Colorado River. super cool when you learn all the good stuff about it but I think it's amazing that 270 million years is missing from the history. So I'm looking at the sky because I'm getting ready to hike the trail and there's a huge storm coming in. I don't know whether to go or not. Because it's definitely coming this way and it's got lightning. I don't know. Hmm. It's coming down over there. I mean, you can't even see across there anymore. It's so, it's so dense. Decisions, decisions. <clears throat> so, I opted out of the Hermit Trail because it's a 7.8 mile descent to the bottom of the canyon. And then you have to climb back up. So, what I've opted to do is the Rim Trail. Um, and I can get off it at any time. As soon as everything stops looking, as soon as it, the righteous weather gets closer, I can hop off the trail and onto a shuttle. So it seems like the better option than uh, trying to descend. And it's it's a 5,000 foot descent. <laughs> so, no, not doing it. Mm -mm. But uh, so I'm going to do this one instead of the rim trail. So far, so I mean, it goes right along the rim, but as its name is suggesting, along the rim of the Green Canyon. So I think that's my best option. It's actually kind of cool watching the storm come in. Uh, every once in a while, you can hear the thunder. You see the lightning, obviously, but it's it's hard to tell how far away that is. It's got to be miles, you know. There is a view of the Colorado River <clears throat> as it meanders through the canyon. It's kind of cool. Apparently, from what I've been told, it's uh, monsoon, uh, monsoon season here, and uh, that's why we got the rain coming in. But when there's monsoon season, the the Colorado River, which is named 
Colorado is Spanish for uh, some sort of color of red and uh, so Red River is essentially because the red silt from the canyon goes into the water and turns it that color. So it's kind of cool. As I'm walking down the trail I'm looking at this bench and it's in full sun and then I realize that's the view. I'd sit in the full sun for that too. Another campsite that's free. Not the one I had planned on. <laughs> I happened upon this one. Because the one that I was trying to go to. And now mind you, these are all national forests. So the roads that you're taking to get to them are national forest roads, forestry roads. That may or may not be maintained in any way, shape, or form. As was my case this evening, I ended up. It took me to a forestry road, really, was just, just two ruts in the mud. We really needed a four wheel drive, and like a dumbass, I, I tried, and I thought, well, maybe it gets better as you go on. It didn't get better, and uh, fortunately, I was able to turn around and um, get out of my car and pee because I really had to pee. This one does not have a vault toilet, but I really don't care. And it's raining when I sit in the tent. I haven't staked it out. Um, it's got a little clip piece to hold the rain fly, and there's no wind, so I'm not really worried about it. But when your gut says, My car can't do that forestry road, listen. And I got really lucky because when I started going, going back down the road, I noticed that there was another forestry road. And I can see the fire pit, so but here's where I am. Along with about my seen two other cars. I think I just heard one full one too, so not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I'm actually quite pleased with myself. Now I just tomorrow is well, I'm gonna try to do the north room tomorrow again. I'm just gonna go up, take a look, take some pictures, and then I'm gonna head over to Zion. But yeah, it was a it was a hell of an adventure. <laughs> I done was trying to take uh, my little bitty Honda Civic onto a forestry road that you need a four wheel drive truck for. But um, Google said I could go, so uh, thanks Google Maps. Mm -hmm.